Hi, this is Heidi from Garden Crossings, and I wanted to give you a little update on how the plants are doing in the Northern Michigan garden. It's been about a month now since they've been planted, and I just wanted to show you how they're settling in. So let's uh, go ahead and take a little tour through the Northern Michigan garden. So we are gonna start off here at the front of the Northern Michigan garden, and let's just take a look here at what we have. So in the front here, we We've ripped out all the old plants and have replaced it all with fresh new plants. So in the garden here, like I was saying, these have been in here for about a month now and they're all settling in really nicely. Um, so we've got, just for a review, we'll start in the back there. We've got the Bernera, we have Mahogany Monster Heuchera, we have the Crested Surf Fern, and then we've got a beautiful Hosta. And then as we move up here, we've got the Hacklenocloa grass that's surrounding that rock. And that's going to look really pretty once that fills in kind of a drift of that nice yellow color. Up in the front here, we've got some mahogany monsters that are planted between the bubblegum supertunias. And then as we head towards the doorstep here, we've got the white wands veronica, which are now blooming. And then in the back, there is a fall in love sweetly anemone with the Tuscan Gold Heliopsis that's also just starting to color up. So the um, it's, it's uh, September right now, and so you can see the petunias are a little bit looking like they're starting to fade. It is getting kind of colder, so they're not looking quite as lush and full as what they did originally when they were planted, but still is adding a nice splash of color to this location. As we head over to the other side, We've got our crescent pots that are planted up here with our petunias. And then we've got the mother-in-law tongue as kind of our thriller. And so what we'll do is we'll take these um, pots and remove all the petunias. And then that mother-in-law's tongue, we can bring that in as a house plant if we want. Because uh, that's definitely something that's not going to overwinter here in Michigan. So that middle plant will get removed and that planter will look really nice. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look here behind these chairs. So this, um, let's see here. So in the corner there, we've got a Fall in Love Sweetly Anemone. And then we've got the Daisy May Lucanthemums, which are now blooming. In the middle there is another Mahogany Monster. So we kind of used Mahogany Monster and carried that through to this side as well. And then we've got some of the Salvia, Purple Salvia there which those are more spring bloomers, so I wouldn't anticipate them to be blooming. Uh, kind of in there next to the sprinkler off to the left, that is a bobo hydrangea. So that will get about as tall as underneath the window and fill in this whole area really nicely. Uh, the rhododendron here off to the right, we left that, that came in this little garden space, and we're gonna leave that because I wanna see how that does and what color it is in the spring. If we don't like it, we can always remove it, but that was something I really wanted to keep in this space. Um, we'll go ahead and walk again around the chairs and look at the side here. So the geraniums, they were here, and we're just keeping them here for because they're color right now but that's probably not something I would replace in the future. Um, all right, so in this little garden bed here, you can see we did some bubble gum that we've planted, and that just gives a consistent color in this area. So there's a lot of perennials in here, but that bubble gum is just gonna always keep a consistent splash of pink. Those, again, they're starting to kind of fade down a little bit because it's fall, but next spring, next summer, those will be replaced with, again, some more bubble gum petunias. Around this rock, we have some of the Paint the Town Dianthus planted. So these are just little plants right now, but once this area fills in, this rock will be totally um, engulfed with the Dianthus, and I think that'll look really pretty around there. Behind the Dianthus is a trio of Monarda, so that will be kind of a midsummer color. And then planted back there by that stone, and then also by the white pole, is the brand new hydrangea, that is the firelight tidbit. So that is only gonna get two foot tall when it's mature. We didn't want it too tall because we didn't want it to block the view of the lake down there. So those should stay fairly compact that we can nicely see over them and still see the lake. Around the pole here, we've got some ultraviolet phlox that are now blooming. And those are gonna get probably three foot tall next year. So we put those towards the back because those are gonna be a pretty tall 
a splash of color and we didn't want them to block again the view and also any of the shorter plants that are near them in the back there is a uh, pulmonary or uh, uh, Jacob's ladder and that will probably get about two foot tall as well so kind of a nice little plant tucked in the corner as we head down the drive we did this little grouping here of pretty much just 100% cone flowers. There's three different varieties in here right now. There's the color coded Orange You Awesome, Yellow My Darling, and then the Lakota Fire. Uh, there is a little grass though that is planted in that corner there just to give a little bit of different texture, different look in the area. Uh, so we'll see how that looks. And this is an area too that as we get more of the Proven Winter Coneflower colors, we can always go ahead and plunk them in here and just um, create just kind of a mass of the cone flowers. So I like cone flowers and I think they're always cool when you plant them in mass, mixing all the different colors together. So we're excited to see how that will look next year. There's buds on it right now, but I don't know if we'll get flowers yet this fall or if that's something we're gonna have to wait until next spring to see. As we head down, if you remember from the other videos, we created a wall for clematis. So this was a retaining wall and we put chicken wire up it. And you can see those clematis are really, they're filling up nicely and they're starting to cling to that chicken wire. And you can even see the Viva Polonia is blooming. And I think that looks really kind of pretty in there. So um, that's just some way to kind of dress up that wooden wall a little bit will be to have the foliage of the clematis grow up to the top. That's about a four foot height there. And so I would think with those four clematis I have planted down there, they should fill that area up and then also bloom at different times so that this wall will always have some sort of color going on um, throughout the summer. As we head down, we've got a couple little side pockets here. Here's a little planting. And this has the Tuscan Gold Heliopsis along with the Serendipity Allium. We've got the Heuchera. I believe this one is the Wild Rose. And then we've got the uh, Sage of Ice Russian Sage. So these definitely were not flowering when we planted them. So I think this is really pretty now how they're all flowering. And I didn't even realize it when I planted it, but <laughs> this garden is primarily purple with just that little splash of yellow in it. And I think the yellow and purple look really pretty together. So that's pretty exciting how that's turned out um, without even intentionally creating that yellow and purple color palette. So. I think that's really neat as well. This next little grouping here is a grouping of tall flocks along with lavender and salvia. So there's the pink dawn salvia and there's lavender, the fall in love, or, um, oh boy, the proven winner's lavender. I'll pop that up on the screen. I'm having a sweet romance, that's what it's called. And then the pink dawn salvia and then in the back there is the ultra, uh, the opening act pink dot flax, and that's gonna be kind of a tall flax. And then that little grass there planted in the back. I anticipate that grass is probably gonna get hidden once those flax grow, because those flax will be at least two foot tall. But coming from the top of the hill, I think we'll be able to see that grass. So um, let's just kind of go ahead and give you a view. This is a pretty steep hill here that we've got planted. And this is um, just how it looks as we're heading back up the hill, just to kind of give you an idea of the different areas we were just visiting. So I'll take you all the way back up to the front again so that you can see where we've been and what it looks like coming from the top of the, the hill. So this is the update on a month being planted with this little garden here is looking like. I hope this is helpful so you can see just how much growth that a month will give in the garden and again excited for next year to see what this looks like once things are matured a little bit more and filled out so we're, we're excited to see what the colors and how our plan actually turned out this is heidi from garden crossings at the northern michigan garden